The market town of Skipton is strategically located at the intersection of roads running from east to west that pass through a gap in the Pennines, a line of hills that are the backbone of England, extending from the Derbyshire Peak District to Hadrian's Wall. The railway also passes through the gap, and so does an earlier form of transport that lost out to the railways, the Leeds and Liverpool Canal. Geographically, it is blessed by being a community not connected to a larger conurbation. It has an air of independence that is not lost on its townsfolk, or indeed visitors who choose to stay a night or two. It is an ideal centre for exploring the Craven district or country of the Yorkshire Dales National Park. In 2018, for the second time in a poll conducted by the Sunday Times, it was voted as one of the best places to live in the UK. Although the tour is of no great distance, it is split over three Ordnance Survey Land Ranger maps, with map number 98 showing most of the route. Explorer map OL2 shows the entire route, but at a larger scale, and to be preferred if you wish to stop and walk away from roads. Start by taking the A6069 out of town towards Ilkley, left onto the A65, then soon right onto the A59 Harrogate Road for Bolton Bridge, where turn left at the roundabout onto the B6160. During this part of the journey you have crossed and then followed the MC and Bolton Abbey Steam Railway, which may be a temptation for a later day. This preserved railway follows part of the route that originally ran to Skipton from Ilkley, which is still in national operation from Leeds. We have now entered Wharfdale, one of several dales, and each has its own character. Here, on a grand scale, an ideal setting for Bolton Abbey. This is the Yorkshire estate maintained by the Duke of Devonshire, who also owns Chatsworth in Derbyshire. Car park, for which there is a charge, is on your left. Cross road for Abbey grounds, which are free to enter. Because the priory was Augustinian, it became a victim of the dissolution in 1539, but part of the building survives as a parish church. A few miles upstream, and still within the Bolton Abbey estate, is the Strid. This is the stuff of legends, with tales of fugitives taking a great leap of faith across the torrent to escape their adversaries. Don't try this at home or anywhere. Instead, marvel how the enormous girth of the river is suddenly funneled through a very narrow gap as it continues its long journey to the North Sea. Further upstream, beyond Burnsell's graceful five-arch bridge, over the wharf, we arrive at Linton, a favourite location in the Dales. The settlement is split in two, with the falls and church down by the wharf at Bow Bridge, half a mile from the village. At the falls, you can freeze or blur water with different shutter speeds. Don't worry, if you haven't brought your tripod, there are plenty of places where a camera can be supported, such as a railing, which is what I've done with this shot. Although not on the tour, you can cross the bridge and take the path to Grassington. Otherwise, continue on the B6160 that passes Kilnsey Crag. 
leave Wharfdale by taking next left onto an unclassified road to Arncliff, passing through Littendale. Continue through village, but don't take the right turn that crosses the river. The next stage climbs a steep hill to High Moorland. Passengers sitting on the left of the vehicle in the direction of travel will get the best views of the valley far below. You will soon see what I mean, but it's quite safe. This exhilarating high-level route takes us to Malham via the town and cove. At the top of the hill, there are places where you can safely pull over for a stop to photograph the views back to Littendale. The road drops briefly down to Downbrook House before climbing up again. Ignore right turn for Settle. Instead, turn left at Crossroads for Malham Town Car Park. The town only a short distance away, but it cannot be seen from the car park. I find Malham Town difficult to photograph. Including foreground interest helps a predominantly open landscape, but your best friend is light courtesy of weather, and I have found late evening shots to be rewarding. If you arrived at the town earlier in the afternoon and are part of a group, then Group A may like to consider walking the Pennine Way down to Malham Cove and village. A bit more than a mile, it is rough walking on limestone with many steps. It will also take twice as long than reckoned, much longer if you have a camera, for it is one of the most dramatic walks in the area. Arriving at the limestone pavement at the top of the cove, there are still more than 400 steps down to the valley bottom and village. Group B, who travel down the hill by car to Malham, can either return to the crossroads and turn left, or continue on the road from Malham Town Car Park. At Malham Village, leave the car in the car park at the other end of town, and then retrace steps back to the cove on an easy path. There is a very good visitor centre in the car park. For the final stretch back to Skipton, continue on the road from Malham to Gargrave, which is about five miles away, and here turn left onto the A65 for Skipton. You follow for much of the way the River Eyre and Pennine Way, and although designated as Airedale, it is also known as Malhamdale. If you choose to stop at Kirby Malham or Ayrton, you will discover some Dale's scenery of remarkable beauty that can be enjoyed devoid of the crowds that flock to Malham without stopping to look. But don't tell them, will you? 